from around the globe. It's theCUBE with digital coverage of AWS reInvent Executive Summit 2020. Sponsored by Accenture and AWS. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE virtual coverage of the Executive Summit at AWS reInvent 2020 virtual. This is theCUBE virtual. We can't be there in person like we are every year. We have to be remote. This executive summit is with special programming supported by Accenture. We're the Cube Virtual. I'm your host, John Furrier. We got a great panel here called On Cloud First Digital Transformation from some experts. Stuart Driver, the Director of IT and Infrastructure and operates at Lion Australia. Douglas Regan, Managing Director, Client Account Lead at Lion for Accenture. And Sadiq Islam, Associate Director, Application Development Lead for Accenture. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on the Cube Virtual. Thanks That's a mouthful, all that. Digital, but the bottom line, it's cloud transformation. This is a journey that you guys have been on together for over 10 years to be really a digital company. Now, some things have happened in the past year that kind of brings all this together. This is about the next generation organization. So I want to ask uh, Stuart, you first, if you can talk about this transformation that Lion has undertaken, some of the challenges and opportunities and how this year in particular has brought it together because you, you know, COVID has been, quote, the accelerant of digital transformation. Well, if you're 10 years in, I'm sure you're, at the, you're in the, uh, on that wave right now. Take a minute to explain this transformation journey. Yeah, sure. So a number of years back, we, we looked at kind of our infrastructure and our landscape and trying to figure out where we wanted to go next. And we were very analog based um, and stuck in the old IT groove of, you know, capital refresh, um, struggling to transform, struggling to get to a digital platform, and we needed to uh, change it up so that we could uh, become very different business to the one that we were back then. Um, obviously, cloud is an accelerant to that, and uh, we had a number of initiatives that needed a platform to build on, and uh, uh, a cloud infrastructure was the, the way that uh, we started to do that. So we went through a number of transformation programs, and we didn't want to do that in the old world. We wanted to do it in the new world. So. Um, for us, it was partnering up with uh, you know, great organizations that can take you on the journey and uh, you know, start to deliver bit by bit incremental progress uh, to get to the, uh, I guess the promised land. Um, we're not, uh, not all the way there, but we're a long way along. And then when you get to some of the challenges like we've had this year, um, it makes all of the hard work worthwhile because you can actually change pretty quickly, um, provide capacity and, uh, and increase your environment and you know, do the things that you need to do in a much more dynamic way than we would have been able to previously where we might've been waiting for hardware vendors, et cetera, to deliver um, capacity for us. So for us this year, it's been uh, a pretty strong year from an IT perspective and delivering for the business needs. Before I get to Douglas, I want to just really quickly redirect to you and say, you know, for all the people who said, oh yeah, you got to jump on cloud, get in early. You know, a lot of naysayers like, well, wait till it's mature a little bit. Really, if you got in early and you were, you know, paying your dues, if you will, taking that medicine with the cloud, you're really kind of peaking at the right time. Is that true? Is that one of the benefits that comes out of this getting in the cloud? Yeah, early? I mean, John, this has been an unprecedented year, right? And um, in Australia, we had to live through bushfires and then we had COVID and, and then we actually had to deliver a, um, a project, a very large transformational pro project completely remote. And then we also had had some some cyber challenges, which is public as well. And I don't think if we weren't, moved into and, and enabled through the cloud, uh, we would have been able to achieve that in this year. It would have been much different. It would have been very difficult to do. The fact that we were able to work and partner with Amazon through this year, which has been unprecedented and actually come out the other end and we've delivered a brand new digital capability across the entire business. Um, it really you know, wouldn't have been impossible if we could, I guess, stayed in the old world. The fact that we were moved into the new, enabled by the new allowed us to work in this unprecedented year. Just Quilk, what's your personal view on this? Because I've been saying on the Cuban reporting, necessity is the mother of all invention and the word agility has been kicked around as kind of a cliche, oh, be agile. You know, we're going to get to Sadiq in a minute on specifically, but from your perspective, uh, Douglas, what does that mean to you? Because there is benefits there for being agile. And- I, mean, I think as, as Stuart mentioned, right? And, and, and a lot of these things we try to do and, you know, typically, you know, hardware and capabilities are the last to be told and, and, and always on the critical path to be done. You know, we really didn't have that in this case and what we were doing with our projects and our deployments, right? We were able to move quickly, able to make decisions in line with the business 
and really get things going, right? So you, a lot of times in the traditional world, you have these inhibitors, you have these critical path. It takes weeks and months to get things done as opposed to hours and days. And it, it truly allowed us to, we had to, you know, rejig things, move things. And, you know, we were able to do that in this environment with AWS support and the fact that we could kind of turn things off and on uh, as quickly as we needed. Yeah, cloud scale is great for speed. Sadiq, I got to ask, get your thoughts on this cloud first mission. You know, it, you know the DevOps world, they saw this early, they're jumping in there, they saw the, the, the agility. Now the theme this year is modern applications with the COVID pandemic pressure. There's real business pressure to make that happen. How did you guys learn to get there fast? And what specifically did you guys do at Accenture and how did it all come together? Can you take us inside kind of how it played out? Sure, man. So, you know, we started off with, as we do in most cases, with a, with a much more detailed blueprint. And we worked with Lions, functional experts, and uh, the vast knowledge that a lot of the infrastructure team had. Um, we then applied our journey to cloud strategy, which basically revolves around the seven R's and, and uh, you know, the key, the three key steps from our perspective were uh, assessing the, uh, the, the current environment, setting up the new cloud environment. And as we go modernizing and, and migrating these applications to the cloud. Now, you know, one of the key things that, uh, you know, we learned along this journey was that, you know, you can have the best plans, but in the environment that we were dealing with, we, we often than not had to make changes, uh, work with a lot of agility and also work with a lot of collaboration with the uh, Lion team as well as uh, uh, AWS. I think you know the key thing for me was being able to really bring it all together. It's not just uh, you know the Accenture team or the Lion team or the AWS team. It's all of us working together to make this happen. What were some of the learnings, real quick, from, real your, quick from your from your journey there? Your journey. So I think so. The you know key from from our perspective, the key learnings around were that you know uh, you know when we look back at uh, the the infrastructure that were, that we were trying to migrate over to the cloud, a lot of the documentation etc. was not uh, available. We were having to uh, figure out a lot of things on the fly. Now that really required us to have uh, uh, people with deep. Uh, expertise who could go into those environments and and work out uh, uh, you know the best ways to to migrate the workloads to the cloud. Uh, I think you know the the biggest thing for me was making sure we had on tap real SMEs across the board globally that we could leverage across various technologies uh, uh, and 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 you know that would really work in our collaborative and agile environment with Lion. Stuart, I got to ask you, how did you address your approach to the cloud and what was your experience? Yeah, for me it's around getting the foundations right to start with and then building on them. Um, so you know, you've got to have your, your your process and you've got to have your, your kind of your infrastructure there and your blueprints ready. Um, you know, AWS uh, do a great job of that, right? Getting the foundations right and then building upon it and then you know, partnering with Accenture allows you to do that very successfully. Um, I think, um, you know, the one thing that was probably surprising to us when we started down this journey and, and kind of after we got a long way down the track and looking backwards is actually how much you can just turn off, right? So a lot of stuff that you, uh, you get left with legacy in your environment. And when you start to work through it with the types of people that Sadiq just mentioned, you know, the technical expertise working with the business, um, you can really rationalize your environment. And, uh, um, you know, cloud is a good opportunity to do that, to, to drive that legacy out. Um, so, you know, a few things there. The other thing is um, you've got to try and figure out the benefits that you're going to get out of moving here. So there's no point just taking something that is not delivering a huge amount of value in the traditional world, moving it into the cloud. And guess what? It's going to deliver the same limited amount of value. So you've got to transform it and you've got to make sure that uh, you build it for the future and understand exactly what you're trying to gain out of it. So again, you need a, a strong collaboration, you need uh, um, you know, good partners to work with and you need good engagement from the business as well because the kind of uh, you know, digital transformation, cloud transformation isn't really an IT project. I guess fundamentally it is at the core, but it's a business project that you've got to get the whole business aligned on. You've got to make sure that your investment streams are appropriate and that uh, 
you're able to understand the benefits that, and the value that uh, you're going to drive back in, towards the business. Stuart, if you don't mind if, uh, me asking, what were some of the obstacles you uh, encountered or learnings um, that might have differed from the expectations? We all been there. Hey, you know, we're going to change the world. Here's the sales pitch. Here's the outcome, and then obviously. Things happen, you know, you learn legacy. Okay, let's put some containerization around that. Cloud native, um, all that rationale you were talking about. What are, and you're going to have obstacles. That's how you learn. That's how perfection sure. is developed. How, what obstacles did you come up with and how are they different from your expectations going in? Yeah, they're probably no different from other people that have gone down the same journey, if I'm totally honest. The, you know, 70 or 80% of what you do is relatively easy because it's a known quantity. It's relatively modern architectures and infrastructures and you can, you know, upgrade, migrate, move them into the cloud, whatever it is, re-host, re-platform, you know, re-architect, whatever it is you want to do. It's the other stuff, right? It's the stuff that always gets left behind. And that's the challenge. It's it's getting that last bit over the line and, and making sure that you haven't invested in the future while still carrying all of your legacy costs and complexity within your environment. So. Um, to be quite honest, that's probably taken longer and, and has been more of a challenge than we thought it would be. Um, the other piece I touched on earlier on in terms of what was surprising was actually how much of uh, your environment is actually not needed anymore when you start to put a critical eye across it and understand, um, and ask the tough questions and start to understand exactly what, what it is you're trying to achieve. So if you ask a part of the business, do they still need this application or this service? 100% of the time they'll say yes, until you start to lay out to them, okay, it's now going to cost you this to migrate it or this to run it in the future. And, you know, here's your ongoing costs and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, for a significant amount of uh, those answers, you get a different response when you start to layer on the true value of it. So you start to flush out those hidden costs within the business and you start to make some critical um, decisions as a company based on, uh, based on that. So, that was a little um, tougher than we, we first thought and probably broader than we thought. There was more of that than we anticipated, um, which actually results in a much cleaner environment post, post migration. You know, the old expression, if it moves, automate it. You know, it's kind of a joke on government how they want to tax everything. You know, you want to automate, that's a key thing in cloud and you got to discover those opportunities to create value. Uh, Stuart and Sadiq, mainly if you can weigh in on this, love to know the percentage uh, of total cloud that you have now versus when you started. Because as you start to uncover whether it's by design for purpose or you discover opportunities to innovate like you, you guys have, I'm sure it kind of, you took on some territory inside Lion. What percentage of cloud now versus the start? Yeah, at the start it was minimal, right? You, you know, close to zero, right? Single, single digits, right? It was mainly SaaS environments that we had uh, sitting in cloud when we, uh, when we started. Um, Doug mentioned earlier on a, a really significant transformation project um, that, that we've undertook and, and recently gone live on a multi-year one. Um, you know, that's all stood up on AWS and is a, a significant portion of uh, our environment. Um, in terms of what we can move to cloud, um, we're probably at about 80 or 90% now. And the balance of it is um, legacy infrastructure that is just going to retire as we go through the cycle rather than migrate to the cloud. Um, so we are significantly cloud-based and uh, you know, we're reaping the benefits of it. And a year like 2020 makes you glad that you did all of the uh, hard yards in the previous years when you start with the business challenges thrown at us. Sadiq, any comment, reaction to, to the cloud percentage penetration? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that, but I, all I was going to say was, I think it's like the typical 80-20 rule, right? We, we, we worked really hard in the, you know, I, I think 2018, 19 to get 80% of the uh, application onto the cloud. And over the last year is the 20% that we have been uh, migrating. And as Stuart said, right, a lot of it is also that's going to be retired. And I think our next big step is going to be obviously, you know, the icing on the cake, which is to decommission all these apps as well, right? So, you know, to get the real benefits out of uh, out of the whole transformation program from a, uh, from a reduction of CapEx, OpEx perspective. Douglas and Stuart, can you guys talk about the decision around the cloud? Because you guys also had success with AWS. Why AWS? How's that decision made? Can you guys give some insight into some of those thoughts? I, I can I can start, start off, I think, Back when the decision was made, and it was a, it was a while back, 
Um, you know, there's some clear advantages of, of moving with AWS, a lot of alignment with some of the significant projects and uh, the, tra the particular one big transformation project that we've alluded to as well. Um, you know, we needed some, um, um, some very robust and um, just future proof and, and proven technology and AWS gave that to us. We needed a lot of blueprints to help us move down the path. We didn't want to reinvent everything. So, um, you know, having a lot of that legwork done for us and, and AWS gives you that, right? And, and particularly when you, you partner up with uh, with the company like Accenture as well, you get a combination of the technology and the and the skills and the knowledge to, to move you forward in that direction. So. Um, you know, for us, it was a uh, uh, it was a, a decision based on you know best of breed. Um, you know, looking forward and and trying to predict the future and needs and 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 kind of the environmentals that we might need, um, and you know, partnering up with uh, organisations that can uh, take you on the journey. Yeah, and just to build on that, so obviously, you know, Lion selected AWS, but you know, we knew it was a very good choice given the. Um, uh, the skills and the capability that we had, as well as the assets and the tools we had to get the most out of um, out of AWS. And obviously, our, our CEO globally has just made you know announcement about a huge investment that we're making in in cloud. Um, but you know, we've we've worked very well with AWS. We've done some joint workshops, some joint investments, um, some joint POCs. So you know, we have a very good working relationship with AWS. And I think um, one incident to reflect upon was the cyber incident again, where we actually jointly, you know, dove in with um, with Amazon and some of their security experts and our experts, and we were able to actually work th through that with Lion uh, quite successfully. So, um, you know, really good behaviors as an organization, but you know, also really good capabilities. Yeah, as you guys, your Accenture Cloud Outcomes research shown, it's the cycle of innovation with the cloud that's creating a lot of benefits. Knowing what you guys know now, looking back, certainly COVID has impacted a lot of people mm -hmm. kind of going through the same process. Uh, knowing what you guys know now, would you advocate people to jump on this transformation journey? If so, how and what tweaks did they make? What uh, changes, what would you advise? Uh, I might take that one to start with. Um, I hate to think where we would have been when uh, COVID kicked off here in Australia and you know, we were all sent home, literally we were at work on the Friday and then over the weekend and then Monday, we were told not to come back into the office. And all of a sudden, um, our capacity in terms of remote access and I quadrupled or more, four, 5X, uh, what we had on the Friday, we needed on the Monday. And we were able to stand that up during the day Monday and into Tuesday because we were cloud-based. And, uh, you know, we just spun up new instances and, uh, you know, sorted out licensing, et cetera. And, and we had all of our people working remotely um, within a, you know, effectively one business day. Um, I know peers of mine in other uh, organizations and industries that are reliant on kind of you know, traditional ways and, and getting hardware, et cetera, that were weeks and months before they could get the, the right hardware to be able to deliver to their user base. So, um, you know, one example where you're able to scale and uh, um, get, uh, get value out of this platform beyond probably what was anticipated at the time. You, you talk about, um, you know, elasticity and all of these kinds of things. And you can obviously think of a few scenarios, but real world ones where you're getting your business back up and running in that period of time is, is, is just phenomenal. There's other stuff, right? This, these programs that we've rolled out, you do your sizing um, and in the traditional world, you would just go out and buy more servers than you need and, you know, probably never realize the full value of, of those, you know, the capability of those servers over the life cycle of them. Whereas, you know, in a cloud world, you, you put in what you think is right. And if it's not right, you bump it up a little bit when when all of your metrics and so on tell you that you need to bump it up and, and conversely, you scale it down at, uh, at the same rate. So for us with the types of challenges and programs and uh, uh, and just business need that's come at us this year, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it without a strong cloud base uh, to, uh, to move forward with. You know, Douglas, one of the things I talk to a lot of people on the right side of history, who have been on the right wave with cloud with the pandemic and they're happy, they're like, and they're humble, like, well, we're just lucky. You know, luck is preparation meets opportunity. And this is really about you guys getting in early and being prepared and readiness. This is kind of important as people realize that you got to be ready. I mean, it's not just, you don't get lucky by being in the right place at the right time. And there are a lot of companies who are on the wrong side of history here who might get washed away. This is a super yeah, important- Yeah, listen, point. I think, yeah. To echo and kind of build on what Stuart said, I think that the reason that we've had success and 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 I guess the momentum is we we didn't just do it in isolation within IT and technology. It was actually linked 
to broader business changes, you know, creating basically a digital platform for the entire business, moving the business where they're going to be able to come back stronger after COVID, where they're actually set up for growth um, and actually allows, you know, uh, line to achieve its, its growth objectives and also its, its ambitions as far as what it wants to do uh, with growth and whatever they might do with, with acquiring other companies and moving into different markets and launching new products. So we've actually done it in a way that is, you know, real and direct business benefit uh, that actually enables line to grow. Jim, I really appreciate you coming. I have one final question. If you can wrap up here, uh, Stuart and Douglas, you don't mind weighing in. What's the priorities for the future? What's next for Lion and Accenture? Thank you. Uh, Christmas holidays. I'll start Christmas holidays. And it's been a big year. <laughs> and, then a, and then a reset, obviously, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's figuring out uh, what transform what we've already transformed, if that makes sense. So we've got a huge proportion of our services sitting in the cloud, um, but we know we're not done. Even with the stuff that is in there, we need to take those next steps. We need more and more automation and orchestration. Uh, we need to um, uh, be able to uh, our environment as more future-proof. We need to be able to work with the business and understand what's coming at them so that we can um, you know, build that into into our environment. So again, it's really transformation on top of transformation is the way that I'll describe it. Um, and it's really an open book, right? Once you get it in and you've got the capabilities and the evolving tool sets that uh, AWS continue to bring to the marketplace, um, you know, working with the partners to to figure out how we unlock that value, um, you know, drive our costs down, drive our efficiency up, uh, all of those kind of, you know, standard metrics. Um, but you know we're looking for the next things to transform and and, and show value back out to our customer base um, that, uh, that we continue to you know sell our products to and work with and understand how we can better meet their needs. Yeah, I think just to echo that, I think it's really leveraging this end-to-end -end digital capability they have and getting the most out of that investment. And then I think it's also moving to uh, and adopting more new ways of working as far as you know the speed of the business. Um, is getting up the speed of the market is changing. So being able to, to launch and do things quickly and also um, be competitive with the, you know, efficient operating cost uh, now that they're in the cloud, right? So I think it's really leveraging the most out of the platform and then, you know, being efficient and launching things um, quickly with the business. Sadiq, any word from you on your priorities while you see this year unfolding? Yeah, so I was just going to say like key learnings first, right? For me were around, you know, just journey this is a journey to the cloud, right? And, uh, you know, as both Doug and Stuart have said, it's getting all, you know, different parts of the organization along the journey from business to IT, to your uh, product vendors, et cetera, right? And it, it takes time, it is tough, but, uh, uh, you know, you, you got to get started on it. And, you know, once we, once we uh, finish off, uh, it's the realization of the benefits. Now, you know, looking forward, I think for, from Alliance perspective, it, it is, uh, you know, once uh, we migrate all, all the workloads to the cloud, it is leveraging uh, off that, right? And as I think Stuart said uh, earlier, uh, with the, you know, the latest and greatest stuff that came out of AWS, it's basically working to see how we can really uh, achieve more better operational excellence uh, from, a, uh, from a cloud perspective. Well, Stuart, thanks for coming on with Accenture and sharing your environment and what's going on in your journey. You're on the right wave. Did the work, you're in the, <laughs> it's all coming together even faster. Congratulations for your success. And uh, really you. appreciate Douglas and Steve for coming on as well from Accenture. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, John. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage of Executive Summit at AWS reInvent. This is where all the thought leaders share their best practices, their journeys, and of course, special programming with Accenture and theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. <laughs>